Here we're going to be looking at issuing common stock at a no par value and it's going to involve some issue costs. And we're going to look at two cases here where we issue no par stock with a stated value and we're going to also be looking at where we issue no par stock without a stated value. So looking at our first case here where we issue no par stock where it's issued without a stated value. So for example here Corporation A issued 60,000 shares of common stock at an issue price here of $8 per share and that's without a premium or a discount and that's the case here where we have no stated value on this stock here. So what the um, what you would do to record this you just take your 60 thousand shares issued times the eight dollars per share here and that would equal four hundred eighty thousand dollars so for your cash account you would debit that here for four hundred eighty thousand dollars so that's the amount you received here on the issuing that stock and then moving over to our equity account here on our common our, on our common stock on our balance sheet and for our equity same thing sixty thousand shares times eight dollars per share four hundred eighty thousand dollars so we credit our common stock here for four hundred eighty thousand dollars so that's what we record as our equity here. So debit here, cash for 480000 credit our common stock here for 480000 Now, uh, the no par stock, that's carried in the accounts at the issue price without any additional paid in capital or discount reported. We simply uh, report or record exactly what we received for that stock that stock here and because it has no stated value on it here so you can see that here we just all we did is report it exactly at the price we received here 60,000 shares times the eight dollar share price that we received for four hundred eighty thousand dollars okay now let's look over here and look at the other case here where the no par stock is issued with a stated value here now why would we do that here so some states require that a no par stock have a stated value and instead of being a no par stock the stated value stock in effect becomes a stock with a low par value. Okay, so let's look at our case here. Again, with it has a it was issued here with a stated value. So uh, for example here, Corp A again issued 60,000 shares of common stock at $8 per share here with a stated value of $3 per share. And it's we're going to also be looking where some issue costs are involved here at $20,000 and how we'd account for those. So first going over to our cash account here. Uh, again, we would have re uh, received here 480,000 simply the 60,000 shares issued times the issue price here of $8 per share. Uh, we received 480,000, excuse me. So we debit our cash account here for $480,000. Okay. Now now let's move over to our equity account here on our balance sheet and we have to divide up this uh, amount that we received here 480,000 we divided it up here be between the common stock at its stated value here plus the additional paid in capital here and that's the excess over the stated value and we'll look at it so first for our stated value here well uh, that's three dollars per share here but that's the in, in what, what it, we want to have to note here the in this case the three dollars uh, a stated value here that's the minimum value for issuing the stock you cannot sell below this that amount here and that's the stated value would be the minimum selling price you can't sell it below that in this case it's three dollars per share in this example so what we would do here uh, our common stock account here at the stated value simply to sixty thousand shares sold times the stated value of three dollars per share for hundred eighty thousand dollars so you credit your uh, uh, common stock equity here for hundred eighty thousand dollars now the excess here goes into additional paid in capital. So we received 480,000. Uh, we recorded here 180,000 of equity, so the difference would be $300,000. And that's really the excess over the stated. That's the $8. Uh, price we received here less the stated value of three dollars the difference is five dollars times sixty thousand shares issued so for three hundred thousand dollars so we credit our additional paid in capital here for three hundred thousand dollars and our common stock was for hundred eighty thousand dollars so that the credits here of uh, would add up to four hundred eighty thousand and that balances with the cash we received here debit amount here of four hundred eighty thousand okay now we have to deal with these issues Issue costs here and that issue costs were $20,000 and we really have to look at two ways of 
two options of dealing with these issue costs. So first let's go and look at these issue costs here. So those are the direct costs of issuing the stock or underwrite, the underwriting costs, the accounting, the legal fees, the printing costs, taxes, and they should be, they have to be reported here and we really have those two options. So looking at option one, that's as a reduction to the amounts paid to additional paid in capital and then we have the second option, option two here, that's where the additional paid in capital is not reduced but the direct costs or these issue costs are capitalized and then amortized. Okay, so let's look at case one here where we, um, the issue cost would be a direct reduction here to additional paid in capital. We debit our additional paid in capital here for $20,000 and then the crediting would go to our cash account here. We'd credit or reduce our cash here for $20,000. Now that's option one. In, in, the, in option one, we can look at our additional paid in capital here. That would be the cash we received here of $480,000. Uh, less the stated amount here of 180,000 gives us additional paid in capital here of 300,000 and less our ad issue costs here of 20,000 so our additional paid in capital the net amount here is $280,000. Now that's for option one here where it was a direct reduction to additional paid in capital. Now we could look at option two here and we'll just go over real simply here. So what we would do in option two here is we would have uh, reduced our cash account here by $20,000 when we recorded it so all we would have received here in our cash was $460,000 and then the balancing amount here uh, would go to our unamortized cost or that would be stock issue costs that we're capitalizing here, debit that here for $20,000. So in option one here, uh, just looking, first off, let's just look at, we would have received 480,000 here, but with option two here, we record in our cash account 460,000, and then the difference of $20,000 here gone to our unamortized or capital, uh, capitalizing those issue costs here for $20,000. Okay, now with these, these unamortized costs, let's just say, for example, we have, at the end of the year here, we had an adjusting entry here. So with uh, of $5,000 here for the uh, amortized amount for the year here. So again, option two, this is where you're capitalizing it and amortizing it. And uh, to note here with option two here, the additional paid in capital remained here at $300,000. We didn't reduce it here by the by the issue costs here that we did in option one here. It just stays at $300,000 and then the um, the unamortized cost here become capitalized at 20000 So for the end of the year adjusting entry, we say we had credited or reduced our, uh, our unamortized cost here by $5,000. And then the uh, debit amount here, credit here to our unamortized cost, the debit amount would go to our amortized cost here in our income statement as a expense here for those, uh, those issue costs here on our income statement. And we debit that here for $5,000. That's just an end of the year adjusting entry here. And I, the, a rational or the deal here with this five thousand dollars that's simply the issue cost here twenty thousand over four years straight line depreciation or five thousand dollars per year here option two here. So just to go over it one more time here with the issue cost just so you're clear on it. Option one, we reduce the additional paid in capital by the, co uh, the amount of those issue costs here and then we would have reduced our cash account here by the respective amount here. But with option two, we would have reduced our cash account here from what we the initial receipt here cash would have been re reduced by the amount of those issue costs and then the balancing amount here of the the issue costs themselves would have been capitalized here and then amortized. Okay, so we've taken care of the case here where, where no par stock is issued with a stated value here. So with a stated value here, you have to set up in your common stock here on your balance sheet or your equity account, you have to put the stated amount here, it goes into your common stock account here, and then any excess over that stated amount goes into additional paid in capital for your common stock here. Okay, now let's go and look at the case here and we're going to talk about some contingent liabilities here and when the one feature here when you're issuing no par stock it avoids any contingent liability here. So let's go and look at what we're talking about with a contingent liability here. Say uh, again for example here Corporate A issued those 60,000 shares of common stock and let's just say we're going to look at the case here where we're going to look at where they were issued here at a par value here. So this has this is where you avoid it here by going with a no par value but say for example we had a par value here uh, the issue 
par value here was three dollars here and we're going to actually receive two dollars per share here so uh, we would have this is where this contingent liability comes in and it's avoided here by not by going with a no par stock so what we would do here in our cash account we would have uh, issued the 60,000 shares and we'd received only two dollars per share for a total amount here of hundred twenty thousand dollars in cash debit our cash here for hundred twenty thousand now with our common stock this is again where we issued at the par value let's just say it was three dollars par value so we would have um, taken the sixty thousand shares times the three dollar par value for hundred eighty thousand dollars so our common stock equity account would have been credited here for hundred eighty thousand dollars so we have an imbalance here between our cash account received of 120 and the common stock here at its par value of 180,000. So the, the difference goes into additional paid in capital and this is where we're talking the liability here. So what we would do is we'd have to reduce uh, the additional paid in capital here, or write it down here by $60,000. That was the $120,000 cash received, less the par amount here of $180,000. That gives us additional paid in capital liability here of $60,000. So we had a debit our additional paid in capital here of $60,000. Now, this is, um, this is the case here where the purchaser of the stock or the current stockholder would be required to pay this amount here, the $60,000, if the company liquidates and that becomes the contingent liability here. So what the person would want, what the company or they would want to do when they're issuing this stock here is they want to issue it at a very low par value. And when you do that here, uh, the um, when you at a very low par value, then what you're essentially doing if you do the arithmetic here, your additional paid in capital would be debited here for a very low amount here. Therefore, the purchasers of the stock wouldn't be discouraged here or any current stockholder wouldn't be discouraged in holding the stock here uh, because they wouldn't be required to pay any major, any, uh, there would only be a minimal contingent liability if any here involved. Okay. So what we're talking about here with this contingent liability here with the, now let's just say when we're dealing with the um, no par stock here, for example here, we're looking at the $3 par amount here. Well, with the no par stock, you can never sell it below the $3, uh, the $3 stated amount here. So you're never going to set up the case here where you're going to be selling it below the stated rate here or the par value in this case, just doing the comparison between the par value and the stated value. You're never going to be selling it below that, so you're not going to set up any contingent liability. All right, so we look at both cases here where we issued this no par stock without a stated value and with a stated value. So just go over this and review it here and you can see the difference here. And we also looked at the case where we involved some issue costs and how we had to deal with those for either by reducing the additional paid in capital directly or uh, capitalizing those issue costs here and amortizing them as an expense.